What I'd really like to talk about is what we're doing here in Bristol. The talk was originally called a manifesto for Bristol, but it's really about what we do here and how it can save the world. And it's a small idea, but I think it can actually grow quite nicely and quite well. So welcome to my backyard, and that is my backyard, I'm not kidding. Um, Bristol is my backyard, and I, I imagine it is for most of you. You live here, we live here, that's Brislington, by the way. Um, when I got to Bristol, I got here as a 17-year-old, ready for university, very naive. I didn't even know how to use a bus. Um, I was born in Watford. When I got to Bristol, I was like, wow, this is an amazing place. This is where I want to live. This is where I want to be. Um, and it transformed me, actually. Bristol gave me a lot, gave me a lot of freedom, because I came here thinking I was going to be an academic. Uh, I just escaped a career of being a doctor, because being Indian, I, um, that was the expectation. Um, sorry if there are doctors in here. Um, I, I just have lots of family that happen to be doctors. I, I managed to escape a future where I was going to marry a man I did not know and did not love. I met the man of my dreams and managed to marry him. It gave me the courage to be that. The being in this city, having that freedom, has given me all of that. So I'm, forgive me if I'm quite emotive about being here and being in this city. I have since raised two children here. I, have, I am the mother of two Bristonians. I've run a company. I, have, um, I, I even sing in a band, not the day job. I have lots of hooks into this city. I am a Bristolian, which is a wannabe Bristolian. I wish I was born here. I'm going on too far already. If I get to the one minute mark, please stop me. Well, actually, what happened before, and that's a little bit early, what ended up happening was I started talking to people in the business community about the future of Bristol. And it started to be fairly negative. It was talking about why Bristol doesn't doesn't punch at its weight. It doesn't have a proper education system that we can be proud of. It doesn't have a, a tram system. It doesn't have an arena. It doesn't have a stadium. Why, 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 do we not, why are we not punching out our weight? Um, and of course, some of the answers would have been, we are where we are. But that's not, that's not what this is about. So what the adventure took me to was um, running the Yes campaign for Bristol, for the, for the referendum for a mayor. And by hook or by crook, me and a band of um, ragtag individuals came together and managed to get a yes against all the odds. We were the only city in the UK to have got a yes at that referendum. And it wasn't, it wasn't a victory that we were necessarily as proud of as we should have been, because three out of four people did not vote. So a group of us got together and thought we would instigate change. We, we wanted to agitate change. We wanted to take Bristol to a different place, because what was happening right now before was not working. So having got a yes, we could have just left it there. Um, and yeah, well, why, why didn't we leave it there? The reason why we didn't leave it there is, is quite obvious, and you've seen it throughout the day, I think. Although I wish I'd been here all the day. I've, I've, I've been at home trying to nurse a little baby. Um, democracy is dying. Democracy is dying and has been doing so for a long time. And our problem is that we've been numbed to this death. We're, we're too busy tweeting, listening to music. We're too busy doing lots of things that are distracting us. Orwell, Orwell was, was wrong. We're, we're not being hidden from the truth. The truth isn't being hidden. Huxley was right. Huxley was saying that actually the truth is out there. We know what's happening to the oceans. We know what's happening to the climate. Yet we are numbed because we are constantly, constantly prone to being distracted. And yes, we are kind of in trouble. And it's a really good quote. Um, good old Plato. It is the case that the price good men pay and women for the indifference to public affairs is to be ruled by evil men. Um, and of course, I mean Murdoch, not, not Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> Running a bit close there. Those of you who are fans of, um, of Hitchhiker's Guide will recognize an SEP, somebody else's problem. We have been conditioned to believe that this is somebody else's problem. Is it somebody else's problem? Because it's on our doorstep. It's here. It's affecting everything. This is our problem, folks. This is our problem. I love Father Ted. Down with that sort of thing. And a brilliant quote by Alice, Alice Walker. Um, Activism is the rent that we should all be paying for living on this planet. We can do stuff right here, right now. This is about the rise of the imbi, not the nimby. The people who believe that you start by changing the world in your own backyard. And you don't have to be great and brilliant. Um, 
Uh, I certainly am not, but I found that by maybe waving a flag, speaking up when you're supposed to, speaking up when you're not supposed to, you can start to attract other people that feel the same way. And by that, you manage to spread something that could never have been achieved into something that can be. So why, why here and why now? Well, we, Bristol's actually quite a special place, and the stars are aligning. I don't know if you know, but about 800 years ago, um, Bristol was the capital of England. Bristol was the place out of which King John was running the country. About 800 years ago, the first mayor was appointed here in Bristol. Seven years ago, there was a gathering um, from European officials and the deputy PM at the time um, to produce something called the Bristol Accord, which you can barely see in the background, but it was about defining the, the characteristics of, of a community or a city that would become very sustainable. I, I hate the word sustainable. I, I'd, I'd rather think about a happy, a happy city that is built for the future and built for, well, for, for caring about what happens on the planet and not, not just what's happening in our backyard. So, OK, I can now talk about the Bristol Manifesto. The Bristol Manifesto is, is the little idea that a group of us had about how we can change this tide and how we can bring democracy back to the people. Um, so you know that if you're living in Bristol, well, I hope you do know, and hope many of you have already registered to vote, and if you haven't, then you're considering doing so, you get one vote, one vote in this city. We're really kind. We're, we're kind of generous. We give you three wishes. Three wishes to make for Bristol. Because if you can imagine that by November we will have a mayor in this city, and a mayor, whoever that may be, because we're apolitical, we don't care as long as they care about what we want. We need to tell them what we want, because otherwise, how on earth can we expect them to deliver? This is about true democracy. True democracy is not about picking the person and then taking what they have on offer. It's about saying what you want, expressing a wish, expressing a desire, giving yourself a vision to believe in, and making it happen. So for us, it's about making sure that the three out of four people, those people who did not vote, do actually try and think about what they want for their futures here in the city. Are they going to be here? Do they want to be here? Why do they want to be here? Is it because there's no other place to go? We want them to want to be here. God, I wish I was them. I wasn't born here. I was born in Watford, for crying out loud. <laughs> Sorry, Watford. <laughs> but it's true. <laughs> so the manifesto. It's one manifesto, no candidate. The idea is to gather wishes from across the city, and we're not restricting it to people who just have a vote in the city. We recognize that there are people out there beyond the boundaries of the city whose lives are dependent on the success or failure of the city. So we want to have them put in their wishes too. And we want to talk about children. We want to talk about young people, the ones who are tomorrow's voters. Because if we don't grab them now, we're going to lose them forever. If you don't ask, you don't get. That's a rule number one of business, right? You've got to ask. No one's going to give it to you. And it's also a choice between more, more democracy that is broken, because in my view, even if the previous system was more democratic, those leaders were not empowered to do what they had to do. And so we have always ended up with an impasse here in Bristol. It's not the leaders, it's the system. We've changed the system. Now let's make sure they know what, they, what we need them to deliver. So that, that's the crux of it, really, that, that we want people to make their wishes. Make those wishes and make that a living document, a living set of visions that people want for this city, that people can be measured against, candidates can be measured against, future mayors, future leaders will look to this document and say, this is what Bristol wants, because we can't hide from it. Um, I don't actually know the guy that made this proper quote, but I do know that it was stolen by Obama's speechwriter. Um, and it's a bloody good quote. And it's true. Change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. We are the people. We are the ones that we've been waiting for. We are the change that we seek. We don't have to do much. You don't have to go out to Africa and try and feed a poor person. You do have to start where you are at and spread it out, I think. I haven't looked at my notes, and I'm probably going get, to get worried that I haven't made the message. But this is the message. Make a wish. Make three. Hell, make more if you wanted to. But spread the word. Make sure the city knows what it's wanting, because it will get what it deserves. And that is it, folks. <laughs>